Hello beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. If you did not see my first video, let me tell you a little bit about what I have going on over here. Yes, I am speaking to you in an AI voice, as I am a better writer than speaker. My hope is that you can overlook this and enjoy the content that I plan to bring you. My channel is a place where I combine two of my favorite pastimes, playing The Sims 4 and following trials. As you can see, I am working on building my Sims 4 courtroom. I play around a lot before I can finally settle on a look or aesthetic, so this is going to be a journey. Meanwhile, I am currently awaiting the start of the Karen Reed trial. Well I guess, officially, Tuesday was day one, but they are just now in the jury selection phase. So far, only four jurors have been seated. It remains to be seen if they will be able to complete the jury Wednesday, or if jury selection will continue into a third day. The Karen Reed trial is to take place at the Norfolk Superior Court in Massachusetts. She is accused of backing her SUV over Boston police officer John O'Keefe, who was her boyfriend at the time. If you want more background information about what Reed is charged with, definitely check out my previous video as I go over some of the more relevant, key details. You can also watch as the Sims 4 version of Karen Reed comes to life. On Tuesday, Judge Beverly Canoni made clear that she will ensure that outside influence will not have an impact on or influence the jury's decision stating, quote, people outside of this building have rights, and we know that they have voices, but this criminal trial will be decided by an independent jury, free from outside interference, based only upon the evidence presented in this courtroom and the law. While public comment will likely continue, the rule of law will be upheld. End quote. I do often wonder how easy it is to be an objective juror in a town that seems to have everyone buzzing about the case. I like to believe that people are generally capable of making their minds up based solely on evidence, but it doesn't often seem to be true. It can be very difficult to get someone to change their minds, even when empirical evidence is presented. Judge Canoni told prospective jurors that the trial could last up to eight weeks, once jury selection is complete. Also Tuesday, both sides submitted their lists of potential witnesses. The state submitted a list of 87 witnesses, while the defense's list is 77 witnesses deep. Of those 77 potential defense witnesses, six of them are expert witnesses including a forensic pathologist and an expert in digital forensics, as well as an expert in biomedical and mechanical engineering. Judge Canoni stated that it was likely that not all witnesses would be called. That is about it as far as the major updates for the Karen Reed trial. Now I simply must move on to yet another Reed who has been accused of, and now convicted and sentenced, in the death of someone else. Miss Hannah Gutierrez Reed. My what a piece of work that one is. If you have not been following, Hannah Gutierrez Reed is the armor from the set of the Alec Baldwin film, Rust. She was found guilty of the involuntary manslaughter of Helena Hutchins back on March 6, 2024. So much about Miss Gutierrez Reed's role in this senseless and 100% preventable tragedy has been baffling to me. I understand the part where her father is, or was, this legendary armor in the movie industry. In true nepotism baby spirit, it would appear that Miss Hannah believes that her father's gifts just naturally passed on to her, as if through DNA or something. That's not how it works, Hannah! While I have a great many opinions, for the sake of time, I am just going to summarize it like this. At trial, a good lawyer can make or break you, but the absolute same thing can be said about a good defendant. I don't know which came first, bad lawyer, bad client, but from my observation Hannah and her attorney were a match made in hell. Three key lawyer-slash-client issues. Number one. Allowing Hannah to answer all of those questions in the police interrogation. He sat by as Hannah dug her own grave and then pulled the dirt down on top of her. Issue number two. A very lackluster defense. Madam Prosecutor was certainly a piece of work, in her own right, but Hannah's defense didn't really put up much fight against her. Issue three. The lawyer allowing Hannah to read that grossly subpar letter to the court after the entire courtroom, most importantly the judge, listened to heartfelt victim impact statements. Two of those statements were made by Helena Hutchins' mother and sister. Perhaps I should throw in a fourth issue. I am not sure if this is a lawyer-slash-client issue, or what. 
I mean, that poor guy can't be blamed for everything. But, we definitely need a fourth issue added to this list, because how is it that, while using the jail phone, Hannah listened to that automatic voice, a voice not much unlike my own AI voice I might add. How did Hannah listen to that recorded voice tell her, prior to each call, that every call is recorded, but she still did not understand that literally every call is recorded? No, this is not a lawyer-slash-client issue. This is a dumb client-slash-stupid client issue. Did Hannah think it was like a customer service thing and that the calls were recorded for quality assurance? It's not for quality assurance, Hannah. It's to catch ding-dongs in their fluff-ups. Now, I am not often left speechless, but I was quite stunned by Hannah Gutierrez reads everything on Monday. Because a few days ahead of her sentencing is when we were first hearing about these jail calls with Hannah Gutierrez Reed, going off on some of every damn body. Everyone else is responsible for her predicament, but her, and she needed to whine about it. She called the jurors the R, word, idiots, and assholes, and was upset that it was so patently obvious that she was guilty that it took them only two hours to deliberate. In addition to the idiot jurors, Hannah's claims not mine, she goes on to blame the child on set who picked up a gun, she blames the paramedics, who were unsuccessful at saving Mrs. Hutchins' life as well as the set medic. She is literally blaming a child before she blames herself. Pure. Insanity. She also is not thrilled that her modeling career was put on hold. Who knew she had a modeling career? Anyway, that line alone gave me no choice, but to go ahead and make a Hannah Gutierrez read sim. No choice I say. Jail calls have been all the rage lately, and, while I have had mixed feelings about this, I certainly would not mind getting to hear a few of Hannah's calls. Anyway, back on track because we have to talk about Hannah's behavior at the sentencing hearing. What a performance. And I do mean performance. When Hannah first sat down, it did appear that she was going to try to work up some tears and try to put on the face of a young woman who actually gives two snits about the life that was needlessly stolen, partially due to her negligence. It didn't take long for that facade to fade and be replaced by the same general overall flat effect we watched during the trial. My own tears were shed as I listened to Mrs. Hutchins' mother cry as she spoke of being awakened, in the middle of the night, alone, and told of her daughter's demise. But, Hannah, who handed the gun over to people who entrusted her to take her job seriously, and, yes Hannah, shake every bullet, every time for every gun that you load with dummy rounds or blanks. Your literal job description is doing that. As I was saying, Hannah sat there cold and stone-faced. The camera often zoomed in on Hannah's father's face, and much projection from the audience followed. Some thought that they read in his facial expression a man full of remorse for the role he could have played in Mrs. Hutchins' death when he gave Hannah the box of supposed dummy rounds that made its way onto the rust set. That illusion faded when Mr. Reed spoke to the judge, but more on that in a second. What I want to say right now is, be careful of who you project your emotions onto. Oftentimes, they are not feeling what you are feeling. After the victim impact statements, it was Hannah's turn to speak. Keep in mind that Hannah was not only speaking against the backdrop of the victim statements, but also those jail calls. In this moment, Hannah gave a very dry and canned apology, which distanced her from responsibility, to Helena Hutchins' loved ones. She stated that Ms. Hutchins was an inspiration. How nice. She then spent most of the rest of the statement excusing her actions and placing the blame on being young and naive. She stated she was as responsible as she knew how to be. You know, for a youngin. To recap, she was 24 at the time. While young, certainly not a teen. She grew up around this lifestyle and should have known better than anyone how important on-set safety is. But, I digress. Hannah also took the time to whine about how the media has portrayed her, which Judge Salma really appreciated, as evident by this look. Hannah capped this lackluster plea for freedom by stating that what she did did not make her a monster. It, in fact, makes me human. She said. Let me tell you, I could really tell that she really thought she ate with that one. She looked as if she thought that was the most poignant phrase she had uttered in her life. Her short young and naive life. No Hannah, no. Look at the judge's face. For just one second. 
please try to figure out empathy, because this was not it. I can imagine her sitting down, pen in hand, furiously writing about any and all that has wronged her, thinking she just needs to get the judge to see, to understand that it was she that was the true victim. Some people just don't get it, Hannah. A pity. After this, Frail, old Papa got up to the podium and, well what I thought he was going to say is that he felt immense sadness for Helena's loved ones, and that he feels a bit responsible due to the issues with the box of ammunition that she took to work, and just about how it's not his daughter's fault and perhaps throw in how wonderful and responsible she normally is? I mean. I don't know, I guess I really expected him to say just about anything other than what he did say. What Papa Reed wanted the court to know is that he agrees that what happened to Mrs. Hutchins was tragic, but he also believes that it would be tragic to put his daughter in prison because of it. Also, that whole thing about the live ammunition being brought on the set by Hannah? Not true, he said. Other people were responsible for it, but not Hannah. The problem, Papa Reed, is that it was up to Hannah to check the rounds as she was loading them. Also, the trial is over. The judge was there. She knows what was alleged and what was proven and what the jury decided was the proper verdict. This does nothing to help. You didn't humanize Hannah. The poor lawyer is left to try to do what neither Papa Reed, also known as Thel Reed, nor Hannah were able to do. Try to make the court see Hannah as someone who is worthy of grace. The problem? Hannah is not worthy of grace. Her attorney cited psychological difficulties and blah blah blah. It doesn't matter. This lawyer never had much to work with. After hearing that Hannah's mom was not allowed in the courtroom, and hearing from her dad, I am thinking that this may have been a case where this attorney was between a rock and a hard place in terms of representing his client to the best of his abilities. It seems his client, and her family, were pretty impossible to advise. A good client knows when to listen to their attorney's advice. It also doesn't hurt if you can find a way to inspire your attorney to defend you as if their own life is on the line. Of course, that should come with a paycheck, but it does not always. It appears to me that Hannah, and her family, managed to do the opposite of inspiring her attorney. Is there a word for that? Fairly sure that, despire, is not a word. But I do want to hear how my AI voice translates it. Will it sound right or not? I can't wait to see. Needless to say, between the jail calls and Hannah's inability to take even a hint of responsibility in the death of Helena Hutchins, Judge Marlow Sommer gave Hannah the maximum allowed. 18 months. I personally have a big problem with the light sentences negligent homicide carries. I understand that the intent to kill is not here with involuntary manslaughter, but it is very much an intentional choice to be reckless. If you are driving at 140 miles per hour on a surface street and your car screams through a red light, and someone is hit and dies, the choice, in that, was to drive at a speed so high that you wouldn't be able to stop if someone gets in your way. That is a choice that is a choice that is a choice. A choice was made when Hannah decided that she didn't need to be diligent with every single bullet that went into those guns. Someone died as a result of it. They are gone forever. For effing ever, they are gone. This is something that Hannah just doesn't seem to comprehend. Her jail call transcripts are so bad. She stated that people in jail are saying to her that they can't believe a pretty white girl was sent to jail for nothing. For nothing. The poop doesn't fall too far from the bum hole, because her dad also could not understand how it would be just to send his daughter to prison for this. That is just a worldview that I cannot comprehend. This doesn't sound too far from how Alec Baldwin's wife reacted when she complained about him being recharged back in January. After having such a lovely holiday. It's like, what planet are these people living on? A family has lost a loved one for the rest of their lives. A loved one that was not there for the holidays. And, here, we have Alec Baldwin's wife lamenting about how upsetting it is that her husband was recharged. She is basically like, this totally killed our post-holiday vibes. A part of me envies not being able to relate to how it feels to just not feel for others, a much larger part of me is glad that I have no idea how that feels. It can be draining living life empathetically, taking on others' grief. But how empty it must feel to not be able to feel anything for anyone but yourself. Anyway, 
I guess this about wraps up this video. It is much longer than I thought it would be when I first sat down. This is all a learning curve for me, and I hope I get the hang of it soon. Maybe also, one day, I will find a more natural sounding AI voice. For now, thanks for watching. See you next time.